Uh, so maybe I should uh, interrupt you there. OK, so a lot of things went right there, but there's also a problem. So um, we protonated the double bond. It, gained, uh, it took a proton from the sulfuric acid. Now, how did you decide whether to put the positive charge on the left or on the right? Because I put it on the tertiary. The more substituted. Yeah, we want to put the carbocation on the more substituted. That's where it's more stable. So that was good. That was a new issue that we didn't see before. Now, when the water attacks here, oh, the so one thing we should have said is, first of all, you put a proton over here. Now, did this form a stereocenter? No. Good. So you're right not to worry about the geometry there. But when we put the water on, oh. Is this one a stereo center? All right. All right. So I should have said that so far you've done everything exactly right. So far things are going perfectly. Okay. So let's keep going with that perfect approach. Where did the sulfate come from? Well, it was produced in this step. Okay, that came out very well. Good. Uh, again, this is called a hydration for two reasons. First of all, water is attacking. And also, the two things that added were a hydrogen and an OH, which together are the elements of water. So that's another reason we can think of this as hydration. We didn't form any new stereocenters, as you correctly saw, so we don't need to worry about wedges and dashes. And there's only going to be one product. Now, is this Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? Yeah. The one big issue that we had here that I didn't put on the previous problem is that now these two carbons were not equivalent. So you had to decide where to put the positive charge, but you figured it out just fine. Um, we want to put the positive charge on the more substituted carbon. Uh, and then the water would come in and attack there. So again, this would be Markovnikov with the electronegative atom ending up on the more substituted carbon. Okay, good. That's the geometry. What type of functional group is this? Is it an aldehyde, or an alcohol, or a ketone, or a carboxyl? Alcohol. alcohol. OK, good. So what is hydration good for in a synthesis problem? How would you know? Alcohols. Yeah, making alcohols. How would you know when to use hydration in a synthesis? Well, if you need to make an alcohol, that would be a good time to, uh, to reach for this hydration reaction here. Does anything else make alcohols? Does this make alcohols that I did last time? Yeah, so we actually have seen a bunch of other things. Yeah. So this is a good way to make an alkene into an alcohol. We also, though, saw that you could just start with an aldehyde or a ketone and reduce it. If you start with an aldehyde or a ketone and you attack it with, say, lithium aluminum hydride or sodium borohydride, that would give you an alcohol. Or we could attack an aldehyde or a ketone with a Grignard, um, and that would give you an alcohol with one more carbon chain than it used to have. So this is not the only way to make alcohols. That's, it's the way to make it out of an alkene. Out of an alkene. That's right. If you got an alkene, the most efficient way to make the alcohol is this. If you have a carbonyl, then probably the efficient way to make an alcohol is by reducing it with a hydride or with a Grignard a reagent. OK. So yeah, this is one more way to make alcohols, especially if you want to put the alcohol group on the more substituted carbon. This is a good way to make an alcohol with the alcohol group on the more substituted carbon mm -hmm. over here. Uh, OK, so that's when you would uh, know to use this in a synthesis type reaction.
let's do this synthesis problem. So let's do a synthesis problem here. Let's say this was our starting material and this was our product. We need to add step by step the reagents that will get from us get us from the starting material to the product. So uh, I need to make an alkene with a by elimination. Sounds good. So then I would use terpyl oxide. Good. So at the same time, maybe we won't go through the whole mechanism for that. That looks like you've, got, you've uh, correctly uh, laid that out. That first uh, reagent would take us to this intermediate, and then your second reagents would take us to the product. Very good. So this is an example of a simple synthesis where we would use this. Um, okay. Um, now, the important thing that might stymie people on the test here is, remember we talked about how it's very useful to number, right? So I could call this, say, the number one carbon. So who's the number one carbon in this picture? What's important to realize, this is not the number one carbon. This is the number one. Because after they're all, the number one is tertiary. So it seems like this is the number one carbon over here. Maybe we could call this the number two carbon. And the main thing that should jump out at you after you put in those numbers is that not only do we have to put in an alcohol, we have to switch it to a different carbon than the original functional group was on. The interesting thing that we did here is we moved the functional group from one atom to another. Isn't it because of the carbon cation being more stable? Right. Okay. Yeah, so we should have talked about that. How did you know that OH would end up on the number one and not on the number two? because the number one is going to give you the more stabilized carbocation over here. That was a key issue that we should have discussed here. That's the reason why this synthesis would work. It wouldn't do you any good to put the OH on the number two, because that's not what the product said. So this is where the regiochemistry becomes very important when you're doing syntheses. Um, this is going to work because we want to put the OH on the more substituted carbon, and that's what hydration would uh, automatically do. Okay, so the key thing here is um, then when is hydration useful? Or to put it another way, when is it useful to form an alkene? Well, one way it's useful is it allows you to switch the position of the functional group. Notice here we had the functional group on the number two. But after we first formed the, uh, uh, the alkene, and then we got rid of the alkene, we were able to put the functional group on the adjacent carbon. So this is something else to have in your bag of tricks. If you're noticing that the final product has the functional group on an adjacent carbon to where the functional group started, well, a good way to do that is to put it in a double bond, because that connects those two adjacent carbons. And then you want to attack it in such a way that the new functional group ends up on the adjacent carbon. Because it's ambiguous, right? right. The double bond's ambiguous, so you can choose based on the stability. That's right. The double bond, went, so when you do an addition reaction to this double bond, um, maybe ambiguous is not the best word that I used before. But the point is that if, when you do an addition reaction to this double bond, if you choose the right reagents, you can get the functional groups to end up on whichever carbon you want. OK. All right, so this is a good example of how we would use hydration in a synthesis. Okay, so um, we can proceed. So looking at your uh, handout on alkenes, what we just went over is the bottom of page one of the alkenes handout. What we just went over is the bottom of page one of uh, the alkenes handout. An alkene plus an acid plus the nucleophile hydration. And the most important part here that's sure to be tested on the exam was the regiochemistry, the Markovnikov regiochemistry, that the OH ends up on the more substituted carbon because the OH attacks second and um, it's attacking the carbocation. We want to form the more stabilized carbocation. 